watching Israeli News Live, RT breaking the story this morning that U.S., Russian, and Turkish military chiefs have, are meeting in Antalya, Turkey. Uh, the discussions that are being made there are not really being disclosed completely other than that they are, they are there to discuss the situation ongoing inside of Syria. And of course, as you know, the other day we reported here on Israeli News Live about a small convoy of U.S. Special Forces moving in and around Mumbai. Uh, there has been uh, some reports that Mumbai uh, is a contention for Turkey. Turkey has uh, said to the U.S. military that they, they are to either move the Kurds from there or get them to move on the other side of the Euphrates River or the Turks may indeed launch an attack on Mumbai. Of course, that wouldn't go over too good with the United States. Neither would it go over very well with uh, President Bashar al-Assad of Syria for the Turks to continue to attack uh, areas inside of his own country. The Kurds, unfortunately, have been thrown under the bus many, many times before. Uh, but um, they're, they're meeting today uh, to see if they cannot resolve these issues that are ongoing there. And speaking about the U.S. convoy in Mumbai, now RT yesterday brought out this particular article here showing a much larger U.S. convoy in Mumbai, all flying U.S. flags, clearly showing to the Turkish military that they are there and that they are not to launch any kinds of attacks on the Kurds there because if they do so, it would be an attack on U.S. Uh, uh, troops as well. Now Russia is involved in this because Russia has been making a stronger relationship with Turkey. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Of course, Russia also has stated many times before that the Kurds are some of the best fighters against ISIS that there is. But unfortunately, every time they're thrown under the bus uh, just because the U.S. and Russia both seem to pander down to whatever Turkey's uh, whims happen to be at the moment. Very sad indeed. Uh, this is another very uh, startling news piece that came out. It was shared with us, shared, uh, with us here uh, by uh, Lorenzo. It already happened. And uh, this here video is very, it's difficult to see the video here. Uh, because of being at night time and uh, Lorenzo did not note where this was actually at other than it is near the border of Kaliningrad, either in Lithuania or that of uh, Poland. But nonetheless, the amount of military hardware that is on this train is enormous. I'll blow it up just so you can try to get a little bit better view of the camera that the guy's using in and out of focus because of it being dark there. We are seeing containers, no doubt, for equipment, military supplies for all this uh, tanks and armored personnel vehicles, uh, ammo, etc. But this is being moved near Kaliningrad. Uh, so very troubling situation there. As we have stated before, uh, we believe that Kaliningrad is NATO's own Cuban crisis in modern times and have believed for some time now that what may be coming uh, for Kaliningrad is going to be a preemptive strike by NATO. I don't think that NATO is really looking to pick a war with mainland of Russia, but the thing is, is if they go to strike Kaliningrad because of the uh, uh, Iskander missiles that are stationed there in Kaliningrad, it's going to wake the, the bear and it's going to drag the, 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 the great Russian bear into the battle without a doubt. And Russia, no doubt, is prepared for this as well as they are doing their own military drills inside of um, uh, Belarus. And last year they had 120,000 soldiers there. Now, not to say that Poland, Lithuania, and Estonia uh, uh, and Latvia do not have the same type of contingency. Poland has about 100,000 soldiers uh, on uh, standby as well. The U.S. has 1,000 soldiers inside of Poland. Uh, in Lithuania, just on the other side there, Germany has 1,000 soldiers with their own tanks and stuff stationed in Lithuania as well as the Lithuanian government has about 17,000 troops there. Uh, you get up into Estonia and uh, uh, Latvia, again, in each one of these countries, there's another 1,000 troops from another NATO country there uh, in each one of these countries as well. But it looks like the U.S. and Germany would be working together if Kaliningrad comes under an attack. Uh, and that is something that we are concerned that may could very well actually play out. Um, 
But it's not the only problem the United States is facing as well. As we know, President Trump is facing again another provocative move by North Korea. Yesterday, Kim Jong-un fired or test fired uh, a few more ballistic missiles. And in the drill, he admitted that these missiles were to, to target in the, as a scenario, the US military bases in Japan. One of the reasons why the missiles fell into the Sea of Japan to begin with. Uh, and very successful uh, uh, test, we might add, as well. In fact, not only has uh, North Korea been testing their missiles, but we know that also Iran tested its own cruise missiles yesterday, and in fact, we're targeting them 150-some miles away, and a freighter, a freighter that they had stationed out in the, in the Gulf there, it did strike, and it was successful. Again, uh, President uh, Trump is not very happy about these particular tests, and you can, we can see that President Trump is preparing and is not playing around at all on this, especially when it comes to North Korea. The U.S. has started the THAAD deployment in South Korea, uh, as uh, Lorenzo is reporting on his uh, website, already happened. You can see by the photographs here on the screen here uh, that THAAD missiles have been unloaded from uh, the large cargo planes flying in and they're definitely not playing games with uh, North Korea. Uh, that being said as well, China is not very happy about these systems being deployed in their region either. Uh, one other serious article that came out on Gatestone of Europe, Sweden's Roundup, another weekend of gang rapes and sexual violence, police forensics uh, uh, so understaffed suspects wa are walking free. This girl here that you see pictured on your screen mentions in the article here that she was groped by some men, but uh, a more horrific uh, situation that took place in Linkoping. A 25-year-old woman was yesterday dragged away by unknown men to a wooded area. She was raped, bound, and stabbed and was found by uh, a passerby a little bit later weeping and crying and was uh, rushed to a hospital there. Uh, these types of attacks are ongoing in Sweden on a regular basis and hardly ever making mainstream media. In fact, authorities are trying to keep this as low-key as possible. Uh, in other news later today, we'll be bringing with you, we'll be looking into the U.S. Embassy move to Jerusalem. We know there was a delegation that met with uh, MK member Yehuda Glick, also known as Rabbi Glick, uh, just recently about the possibilities of moving the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem. This was something that was voted on by the Congress and the Senate back in 1995. I thought it might have something to do with the Oslo Accords of 1994. Can't say that it doesn't, but it seems to be that only the U.S. Embassy was the one that was voted to go there. And of course, at the time, President Bill Clinton was not for that idea, but Congress still voted to do so. You may be surprised to find out that this move of the U.S. Embassy may very well cause one biblical prophecy to fire up. And we'll be discuss discussing that later today here on Israeli News Live in a prophetic segment. So don't be sure to be watching for that as well as it will air on Danoon Institute. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom.